Hello everyone, this is Falcon Laser, and in this video I'm going to show you a system you can get for the price of the Bose Lifestyle 535, which is $3,300. And this system, just like the Bose Lifestyle 535, has small speakers. I know people like Bose's Lifestyle systems for their speakers' small size, but I'm telling you for the price of their systems, you can get much better sounding and better built small speakers. So anyway, Without further ado, let's start looking at this system. First, for the AV receiver, we have a Yamaha Aventage RX-A840, which is $850. Now, I explain how this AV receiver compares to the Bose Lifestyle 535's Media Center in much more detail in my video Bose Lifestyle vs. Yamaha AV Receiver. But put simply, it's a lot better. I'll explain some key things here. One being that a big deal about Bose's newer lifestyle systems is you can buy an optional Wi-Fi adapter for another $100 that'll let them stream Pandora, internet radio, and music from your own playlists. Well, this AV receiver, in fact, most AV receivers on the market can do the same thing, and it has those features already built in. And this has actually been an industry standard for the past few years, so this isn't very innovative on Bose's part. Anyway, another thing is, unlike the older Bose V-Class systems, the new 500 series lifestyle systems no longer have iPod connectivity. Instead, you have to buy an iPod dock for another $100. While with this AV receiver, you can plug an iPod or iPhone directly into its front USB input there with an iPod cable, and it will display your device's content on the AV receiver's own display. As you can see here, it's displaying the name of the song I was listening to and on your TV. Finally, a big deal with Bose's lifestyle systems is they can equalize the speakers to match the acoustics of your room. Well, this AV receiver, in fact, most AV receivers on the market, can do the same thing. That's not a feature exclusive to Bose, as some people may believe. But you know what? This system's speakers are so much better than the Bose Lifestyle 535's Jewel Cubes that no amount of equalization could ever help the Bose speakers sound better. Anyway, onto the speakers, we have the Paradigm Reference Millennia Ones, which are these things right here. That's what they look like with the grill on. It's the same design all around, except you can tilt them on their side for use as the center speaker. And for five of them, it is $1,250. So they're $500 a pair, or $250 each. Well, how do these compare to the Bose Lifestyle 535's Jewel Cube speakers? Well, here's a picture of a Bose Jewel Cube. They are very tiny, or only 4.5 inches tall and 2 inches wide. Now, the Paradigm Millennia ones are bigger than the Bose Jewel Cubes. They're actually nearly about twice as big. But they're still small compared to larger bookshelf speakers or tower speakers. And the question is, do you want to spend $3,300 on a system that has extremely small speakers but has $1,000 home theater in a box sound quality? Or on a system that has slightly bigger speakers but has $3,300 sound and build quality? And that's what the Millennia Ones have. Well, anyway, first let's talk build quality. The Paranine Millennia Ones enclosure is made of die cast aluminum. The Bose Jewel Cubes and the Bose Horizontal Center Speakers enclosures, on the other hand, are made of plastic. While plastic isn't bad for a speaker enclosure, it's usually used when saving production costs as a factor, so it's inexpensive. Especially when compared to die-cast aluminum, which is a very high-end and expensive material to use for a speaker enclosure. As for drivers, the Millennia Ones have a 1-inch aluminum dome tweeter which is this thing right here, produces the high frequencies, and a 4-inch aluminum cone mid-bass driver produces the mid-range and mid-bass. So these are full-range speakers. On the other hand, the Bose Jewel Cubes have two 2-inch drivers that are made of, as you can see, barely treated paper, which is simply cheap, especially compared to aluminum. But also, 2-inch drivers are too big to produce accurate highs and too small to play accurate mid-range and much less mid-bass. 
In fact, they rely on the Bose Acousamass module, which is basically Bose's subwoofer, to play the mid bass for them, which is a bad design. In fact, I have a video in which I explain how this is a bad design, which I've put the link to in the video description. So watch that if you want to know more. But since the Millennia Ones here are full range speakers, they don't need a separate bass module to play the mid bass for them, so they're a better design. But it actually goes a little bit deeper than this. The Millennia One's parts are derived from Paradigm's more expensive lines of speakers, as in speakers that cost far more than anything Bose makes. This dealer here has one pair here. This is the Paradigm Reference Studio 10, which is the least expensive speaker in the Studio series, which are $1,100 a pair, which is more than the Paradigm Monitor 7s here, which are bigger and have multiple drivers. However, the Studio 10s have far better made and better sounding drivers, so while they're smaller, they make up for it with their parts quality. And the same applies to the Millennia 1s. They cost more than a lot of speakers that are much bigger, such as the Paradigm Atom Monitors up here, which are $400 a pair. And while the Atom Monitors are bigger, the Millennia 1s are made with better quality parts that are more expensive to produce. And while the Atom Monitors can get louder and are better for movies than the Millennia Ones, I think the Millennia Ones, in terms of mids and highs, actually sound better than these. And the Atom Monitors here sound much better than the Bose Jewel Cubes. So if the Atoms can sound better than the Bose Jewel Cubes, and the Millennia Ones can sound better than the Atoms, then it's logical the Millennia Ones will sound far better than the Bose Jewel Cubes. So you could say comparing Bose's Jewel Cubes to the Millennia Ones is like comparing Bose's Jewel Cubes to more expensive speakers. In fact, I once saw a Bose fan here on YouTube say in a comment that the only speakers that can sound better than Bose are ones that cost more. Well, according to his logic, these speakers should sound better. Now, you could argue that, oh, but you're paying for all the research Bose puts into their speakers, as Bose's motto is better sound through research. Well, the Bose Jewel Cubes have been around for 20 years and have hardly, if at all, changed in design since. So any research that went into them has been paid off. In fact, speaking of Bose's research, in my other video about the Bose Lifestyle 535, I actually talk about Bose's research in depth so watch that video if you want to know more. Anyway, let's look at the system subwoofer. We have a Paradigm Monitor Sub 8, which is $700. Anyway, now as you may notice about this subwoofer, it is absolutely tiny, which it is. It has a 10 by 10 by 11 inch enclosure, and it has an 8 inch driver. However, looks are very deceiving. Despite its size, it can play very low and very loud. Compared to Paradigm's other less expensive 8-inch subs, which I show in a couple of my other videos, such as the Paradigm PDR80 here, which I show in a video that shows a small speaker system you can get for the price of the Bose Lifestyle 525, this sub has three times the power those subs have, and it has a very high excursion driver. Here, this is what it looks like in action. Basically, high excursion means its driver can move in and out a lot, which gives it the ability to move a lot of air. And it can play down to 19 hertz, which is actually 1 hertz below what the average human can hear. And 19 hertz is unheard of for an 8 inch driver. The sub bass frequencies, which are any frequencies below 80 hertz or so, which are frequencies you feel more than hear require a lot of air movement, and 8 inches is the minimum size a subwoofer should be, and usually it's only bigger and more expensive subwoofers that can play that low. So again, the fact this sub can play that low is truly incredible. But how does this sub compare to the Bose Lifestyle 535's Acoustamass module? Well, as I said, a subwoofer should be at least 8 inches, but Bose's Acoustamass module has two 5 and a quarter inch drivers inside a bandpass box, which are simply too small to play loud and low sub bass. And the thing is, those lesser Paradigm 8 inch subs I mentioned earlier can play lower and louder than Bose's Acoustamass module. 
and this subwoofer can play vastly louder than those 8 inch subs. In fact, this sub can play even lower and louder than the Paradigm PDR100, which is this thing. And I show it in a video in which I show a big speaker system you can get for the price of the Bose Lifestyle 525. And comparing it to Bose's Acoustamass module is overkill. So therefore, comparing this sub to Bose's Acoustamass module is double overkill. I think one of the first things you'd notice if you were to compare this system and the Bose Lifestyle 535 side by side is this system would have a lot lower and louder bass. Anyway, well, that's all the speakers. As for cables, I would recommend good ones. I'd say about $100 worth of cables that would include a subwoofer cable and wired about 50 cents a foot would be sufficient for the system. I know cables are a very controversial thing in the world of audio equipment, so if you want to spend less or more, you can. Now, the Bose Lifestyle 535 has a very cool feature called Unify, which I think is the best thing Bose has ever come up with. It shows you how to set up your system on your TV and lets you choose your components you want to use from a scroll down menu, which makes it very easy to use. But with this system, you can get a Logitech Harmony Universal Remote Control or Nevo Universal Remote that will do something similar. Here, I'll show you how my Nevo Remote works. So, here's here a touch screen, and you can see it has like activities on it, like watch movie, play music, and auxiliary. So, anyway, well, say you wanted to watch a movie. You'd go up here, you'd press watch movie. And in one button click, it will turn on all the components you need for the activity. It turns on here the Blu-ray player, the AV receiver, and the TV. It'll turn the AV receiver to the correct input. And if you give it a bit here, it'll be ready to go. So anyway, in the remote, all the buttons on the remote will control the Blu-ray player. So, yeah, anyway, if you want to shut it off, you just press the off button, and it'll shut off all the components. Anyway, the Logitech Harmony and URC remotes pretty much work the same, and they all range from about $200 to $300 or so. dollars. You're probably going to want to get a dealer to program them to because they are not easy to program. But anyway, well, basically getting one of those remotes will make this system arguably just as easy to use as Bose's Unify feature. Anyway, well, if you add up the cost of this system, it comes out to about $3,300. Now, I know sound quality is subjective, but I'd bet you $20, and I'd probably even let you raise me, that if you got 50 people and had them listen to this system in a Bose Lifestyle 535 next to each other in an AB blind comparison, over half of the people would choose this system as sounding better. And the Bose Lifestyle 535 doesn't sound horrible. I'd say it'd be a good deal for about $1,000, but $3,300 is insane. But hey, don't take my word for it. Go to a Bose-only dealer, bring your own music, and listen to a Lifestyle 535. Then go to a dealer that sells Paradigm, and I mean, there's even other brands that are in league with Paradigm's quality. A few brands that make very high quality compact speakers similar to the Paradigm Millennia Ones are Martin Logan, Focal, and Bowers and Wilkins, so I definitely check those speakers out. Best Buy's Magnolia Room actually sells Martin Logan and Bowers and Wilkins, so those should actually be pretty easy to find. But Focal is only sold in specialty dealers like this, so they're not sold at like big box stores like Best Buy, so you're gonna have to do a dealer search for them. Anyway, Bring the same music and listen to a system such as this. Hey, maybe you like the Bose Lifestyle 535 better, but maybe you won't, and we'll be thankful you actually checked out other options before buying a Bose Lifestyle 535. And you know, this system's sound quality is actually overkill. The systems I show in my videos about the Bose Lifestyle 525 blow the Lifestyle 535 away. In fact, I know something people like about Bose's Lifestyle systems is they're easy to set up, well, heck, just buy one of the systems I show in my videos about the Bose Lifestyle 525 and pay a dealer $800 or so to install it for you. That way, you wouldn't need to worry about setup at all, and you'd still have a system that sounds better than the Bose Lifestyle 535. Anyway, well, that's pretty much the video.
I have another video about the Bose Lifestyle 535 that shows a system that has big speakers along with two videos showing systems you can get for the price of the Bose Lifestyle 525 and a video showing a system that costs less than both of Bose's lifestyle systems that sounds better than both. In fact, you may notice this dealer has some Bose Direct Reflect Cubes up here, which they were able to get through a distributor. And I talk about these in my other videos, which I've put the links to in the video description. Anyway, thanks for watching.